Ukraine's fierce resistance against Russia's invasion has surprised many observers, but that's in part because one weapon in their fight, a low-cost, missile-toting flying robot, is fulfilling predictions made by military futurists. Russia has seen shocking losses of tanks and other armored vehicles. While the true extent is hard to know, attempts by open-source intelligence analysts to document losses verified by photographic evidence suggest hundreds of vehicles have been lost. Some 33 of those vehicles, including two trains carrying fuel to Russian forces, have been destroyed by a cheap Turkish drone called the Barakter TB2. And that's a conservative estimate. The TB2 is an autonomous flying vehicle capable of launching missiles, developed in Turkey over the last decade after the US declined to sell the country American-made drones like the Reaper. Each one is estimated to cost between $1 million and $2 million. It has been seen in action in conflicts near Turkey, Libya, and Syria, but came to more prominent attention during the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War, when Azerbaijan and Armenia faced off in the disputed territory. Azerbaijan was able to emerge victorious thanks to its use of TB-2S to destroy comparatively advanced Armenian tanks and artillery. What's clear in that conflict is that a less funded nation can do combined arms warfare, U.S. Army Colonel Scott Shaw told Foreign Policy last year, using the term of art for tactics that employ aerial capabilities alongside infantry and armor. You don't need something like the United States Air Force, a superbly trained, spectacular capability, in order to conduct potentially a local air-to-ground or air-to-air -air activity. That forecast has been playing out in Ukraine, where many military experts expected Russia's more advanced military to quickly occupy the country. The TB-2 has helped Ukraine capitalize on logistical problems that are leaving some Russian convoys stranded. Though the drones are comparatively vulnerable to attacks by fighter jets, helicopters, and surface-to-air missiles, thus far they have been able to operate thanks to the surprising failure of Russia to dominate the skies over Ukraine. Military experts still expect that Russia will ultimately seize Ukraine's key cities, likely through the brutal tactics of attacking civilian areas that have characterized Putin's past military actions. If Ukraine's resistance turns into an insurgency, drones could still play part. U.S. strategists have fretted about cheap Chinese drones being used against U.S. forces enmeshed in foreign conflicts, and Israel even assassinated a Palestinian electrical engineer thought to be developing drones for Hamas. This is just the beginning of how low-cost technology can change the course of war for countries like the U.S. and Russia that rely on expensive armed ground forces. The weapon is even part of Ukraine's information warfare strategy. Amid the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a small portion of the defender's arsenal has had a disproportionate effect, Ukraine's handful of Barakter TB-2 armed drones. Videos of their exploits have millions of views. They've destroyed surface-to-air missile launchers and logistics trains. They've inspired songs and are a common refrain in videos taunting the Russian invaders. Despite their small number, around 20, according to pre-war comments made to Al Monitor, the drones have been heavily utilized, according to Ukrainian officials. Russia, on the other hand, claims it has shot down some of the drones. According to Stijan Mitsier, an open-source intelligence analyst, the small Turkish-made drones have destroyed at least 32 Russian vehicles since war broke out last week, though it's impossible to independently confirm the total number of vehicles they've destroyed. An expert on Russian drone warfare, Samuel Bendet of the CNA think tank, explained to Military Times that even the drones' limited successes show that Russia is failing to implement its own air defense strategies. He added that Russia studied the lessons learned by Armenia in last year's war with Azerbaijan, which saw the latter nation decimate Armenian positions and vehicles with Barakter drones and loitering munitions. Perhaps the biggest lesson of that conflict, Bendet said, was that slow, low-flying drones like the Barakter are effective against outdated air defense systems. Russian planners were confident that their force structure, which prioritizes modernized, layered air defense, 
would be able to prevent such a massacre, but we're not seeing what Russians have advertised, Bendet said. Russian units are usually arrayed in battalion tactical groups, BTGs, with layered air defense and anti-drone capacity, said Bendet. But the forward elements of Russian forces have failed to operate as BTGs in Ukraine, frequently leaving behind their air defense assets, in inexplicable fashion, he added. In Ukraine, Russia doesn't seem to display the very tactics, techniques and procedures that it's practiced for years and sought to perfect in Syria, to provide adequate cover to its ground forces, he said. Vendette also pointed towards the mythology of the Barakter and how Ukraine is winning the information war. For all the Russian military talk about winning information war, they seem to be losing, and the videos of Bayraktars striking what appears to be Russian targets is feeding into that Ukrainian information campaign, he said. Vendette believes that the days of Bayraktar strikes are limited, though, should Russia reorganize its advance. If the Russian military reorganizes, if it sends in the BTGs, if it sends in adequate air defense capability, if it sends in its electronic warfare forces, it would become increasingly more difficult for Bayraktars to operate in an uncontested fashion, said the drone expert. They were definitely aware of the threat. They definitely practiced against the threat. And even should the Russians recover and counter the drone threat, he noted, they were supposed to eliminate a lot of Ukrainian air defense capability from the first hours of the campaign. That includes the air bases where the drones are stored, fueled, and equipped. A portion of that responsibility, according to other experts and U.S. officials who spoke with Reuters, lies with the conspicuous absence of the Russian Air Force over the skies of Ukraine.